Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I really shouldn't steal board games, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 100 games of all time, number uh, 90 through 81. Now, I have previously done, uh, you can see the video for my 100 through 91, and I've got my um, 150 through 101 listed on the discriminatorgamer.com. You can check that out. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at my top 100 games of all time, number 90 through 91. Number 90 is Merchants and Marauders from Z-Man Games. This is a pirate game, it's an open world game, it's a sandbox game, it's a game that reminds me a lot of like Firefly the board game or Zaya Legends of a Drift System um, because it is uh, very, very, there's so many paths to victory and so many things you can do. It's pick up and deliver, but you can also engage in combat, you can become a pirate and, and fight uh, kind of the powers that be. It, it's, it's open world and I really like that. I really like that sense of adventure that this game brings and there's not, not a lot of games that give you kind of a grand sense of adventure, but this one certainly does. The production knocks it out of the park, and just the gameplay is very, very fun. I'd almost say this is a game you play more to experience necessarily than to win, but it's a very, very fantastic game. So this is Merchants Marauders from Z-Man Games. That is my number 90. My number 89 is A House Divided by uh, Mayfair Games. House Divided is a Civil War war game. Essentially, one of you is the North and South. You've got... Um, various chits that represent your armies and you have uh, kind of railroad tracks and roads that connect all the various cities throughout the eastern United States and it's a very simple game it's a very easy game to play but it's kind of and it's kind of a very basic war game I don't think it's very difficult at all but it's it's one of those games that has a lot of strategic choices and a lot of strategic possibilities um, I really like I haven't played this game in a while but I really like it because it's just when I think of the good for me the good kind of big strategic civil war game. This is kind of the one I'm thinking of. Um, there's one other one that, that I kind of think of too, but this is one of them I, I really like a lot. Enjoyed it every time I played it. I really get a good sense of the war and the strategic possibilities there. Um, but it's not loaded with overly complex rules. So I think it's a good entryway for people who want to get into these, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a big grand civil war str strategic game. So this is a house divided from Mayfair Games. That is my 89. My 88 is a game, another war game. This one takes place during the American Revolution. This is Washington's War from GMT Games. Washington's War from GMT Games is a game that is as much about political control as it is about kind of military uh, actions. And it's, it's, there's a card-driven aspect uh, of it too here. In fact, one thing I like about this game is there is there's a card deck that has the has events in it and has the year uh, that the game ends essentially when the treaty comes up and so you're, you you never know after a few turns you never know when that treaty is going to come up so you're trying to play every turn to do the best you can because you never that turn because you never know if the if the if the end phase is going to trigger then so it kind of prevents you from take, hit, taking a long term strategy in some ways when you hit when you get into it so far because every turn you've got to be in the superior position because you just don't know. But I really like Washington's War. I like the theme, and I like the uh, execution here. Very good, like I say, political and military game from GMT Games. That is number 88, Washington's War from GMT. My number 87 is a game that came out, I think, in 2017. Uh, it was actually just after I moved to Texas. I remember playing this game. And this is Whitehall Mystery from uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Whitehall Mystery is kind of a, a streamlined version of Letters of Whitechapel. Essentially, you have, uh, I think, f three or four... Um, uh, policeman trying to hunt down Jack the Ripper. It's a hidden movement game. Jack the Ripper, of course, is writing down his movement, where he's going from turn to turn, and the policemen are trying to, they're hot on his trail, trying to locate him. And, you know, Letters from Whitechapel, which is a great game, it has some, a little more complicated setup. There's a little more to it. This game kind of strips all that down and just makes it a basic chase game. I think this is a good game because younger people can get into it. People that don't want to, want to invest the time in that other game can get into it. But it's it's fun. I really had a lot of fun with this. This is Whitehall Mystery from uh, Fantasy Flight Games. That is my number 87. My number 86 is a game that I just played recently. Um, it is uh, Caesar, Rome versus Gaul. This is another game. It's, it's a lot like Washington's War. 
um, in the it's 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 as much about the, pol the politics and kind of spreading your 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 political power as it is about the military battles. But again, it's car this one's card driven. It, you know, it's it, the the cards kind of work like Twilight Struggle. You play the card for either the event or the action point value. Some cards that you get will let you play them for both. But it's it's uh, a lot of fun because, as I say, you're you, you you've you've got to maintain the the, the military thrust of the game you got to maintain your kind of the you, you want to be in a superior position militarily but you got to pay attention to the politics and spreading your politics and your control markers and if you get cut off you can lose them but there's dirty tricks you can play with those cards that's my favorite thing is you can play these really dirty tricks you know people work really hard to spread their politics and then boom somebody can play a card and, and remove them and it's really a lot of fun so this is uh, number 86 that is Caesar Rome versus Gaul my number 85 is a game that came out again, I want to say 2018. Um, this is a game, uh, War Chest, um, by AEG. And this was a David Thompson design I really liked. And War Chest is awesome because it is... It's like a deck builder, but it's but it's like a like a like a bag builder. And you're, you've got these... Uh, it's chess. It's a riff on chess. And one-on-one's okay, but I really like it as a team game, two-on-two. Because two. you're essentially... <clears throat> recruiting through cards these various piece, chess pieces um, that you then have different attack and movement styles and uh, it, it's really fun because it's 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 different again it's not I don't know that I played a game like this now there's other chess variants that I like quite a bit but I've never played a chess um, game that was quite like this it was just exciting and every time you're playing it it's like okay what am I doing oh okay what am I doing here and it, it you you get the pieces on the board, you're moving with them, you're playing with them, and then especially when you're playing with a team, you're trying to negotiate with your teammate how best to go about it. But it's just a lot of fun. A very unusual game in the box is really cool. It's actual little kind of looks like a little chest, and anyway, it's fun. But this is a War Chest that is 85 from AEG. My number 84 is also from AEG. This is Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns is a great little kind of tile placement game, but you're kind of tetrising the shapes that you're putting on the board and you're, you're trying to get them to, 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 to match and to go into different spots and I really enjoyed it quite a bit. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it this is a game that I think is good because younger people can play it but it's got enough um, meat to it that it's still fun if, if you're older and it's not a very long game but it's, it, it just kind of hits the right sweet spot of, of, of I think um, complexity levels. It's not too complex, but it's complex enough that you're engaged with it, and there's a good there's good strategic choices there. Really enjoyed it. This is Tiny Towns, number 84 from AEG. My number 83 is from Academy Games. This is Tudor. Tudor is one of my favorite Euro games like this. It's um, essentially you're competing in the court of Henry VIII <clears throat> for favor, and you've got um, you're in the court. It's worker placement in a way because you you move your agents kind of into this in, into these chambers where they can do different things depending on the seats they're in. But then you're also trying to move guys forward closer to various offices within the within the court, and that's fun too. <clears throat> but then on top of that, you've got these rings. You've got this like literally hand that sits in front of you, and you place these rings on the hand. And where you place those rings give you additional uh, bonuses and uh, and advantages as well. Very fun game. This is uh, Tudor from Academy Games. That is number eighty three. My number eighty two is more kind. Of, you know, I'm hesitant to say it's a party game, but it's but it kind of falls more in that genre. This is the Resistance Avalon. The Resistance Avalon is a great. Um, social deduction game, who are the bad guys, who are the good guys. You're trying to get that all figured out. In the Avalon over the original, and I know in the original they've, they've since modified it, but in, in Avalon originally you had like Merlin who knew who the bad guys were, but and then you had assassins, and if the assassins found out who Merlin was at the end of the game, they could they could win. Um, really fun, but the, we did a um, playthrough of this game in 2014. I think Stan was there, and Justin, Holly, and uh, George... And uh, Sean was there, and um, we played this game, and it was just it just just tremendous fun. We we actually had a blast with it, so I highly recommend that. That is um, the Resistance Avalon. It's from Indie Boards and Cards, and that is my number eighty-two. My number eighty-one is another uh, chess variant. This is For the Crown from Victory Point Games. I believe it's out of print right now. But For the Crown is freaking awesome because again, it's a deck builder. Um, it's a deck builder 
where you actually recruit um, the pieces. Now, unlike War Chest, where you actually have the bag, this is more of just kind of a straight deck builder. And you you can spend the currency you've got on your cards. You can either do actions with them, or you can spend the currency to, to buy more cards. So, you, like, one act, the first part of the game is essentially buying new cards and populating the game board. And the second part of the game is actually fighting with the, with the troops you've recruited, as it were. And it's a very fun system, and it's a very fun game. And part of the game, and I think just about every game I played, the loser lost because they forgot what the other player's pieces did. You know, in chess, you have to always be aware of the other pe people's pieces and what they're doing. Here, it's hard to do that because there's so many different pieces. And then with the expansions, there's even more. But For the Crown is a freaking awesome game. Um, this is one, again, we did another um, review of that first year. I, I think uh, um, this is one I, I did with Evil Cody, so you might want to check that out if you like the Evil Cody stuff. But For the Crown, a fantastic game that's from Victory Point Games, and that is my number 81. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today for The Discriminating Gamer. We appreciate you uh, watching and tuning in. Let me know what you think about your top 100 games. Where would you put your games in this list? Please let me know and uh, leave a comment here on YouTube or on uh, wherever else we post this, on Facebook, whatever. Please like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. If you like World War II military history, please check out my other YouTube channel. That is uh, Cody Carlson, Ph.D. We discuss those kinds of topics there. I'd appreciate you to check that out and subscribe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, you can also... Also check out my top uh, 50, uh, 150 through 100 games on our website, thediscriminatinggamer.com. Check that out as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you, my, uh, my brother actually once stole a board game. He got life. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time. I bet his number one game is Golden Girls Monopoly. <laughs>